Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number seven, which is the last question from this S1, Statistics S1, October 2022, International A-Level at Excel paper. This question is about discrete random variables. It says, Adana selects one number at random from the distribution of X, which has the following probability distribution. So there are three possible outcomes when she selects a number. Those outcomes are 0, 5, and 10. Those are, the, those, those are the discrete random variables in this case. And the probability of her picking each of these numbers are given. So the probability of her picking a 0 is 0 0.1, a 5 0 0.2, and a 10 0 0.7. That's called the probability distribution. Now, given that the number selected by Adana is not 5, write down the probability that it is 0. So this is one of those conditional probability questions. So you've got to find the probability that she picks a zero given that the number she selected is not a five. Okay, so here what we do is we limit our sample space to whatever it says given. So not five means it can either be a zero or a ten. Okay, so we're only taking from our sample space from the, you know, uh, these two. We're only picking from zeros and tens. Okay, so our denominator is not now one. Before the denominator would be one. All probability distributions, they add up to one. But here the denominator is going to be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.7, which is 0 0.8. And the probability of picking a zero is 0 0.1. So you end up with one over eight. Okay, so here's the answer for part A. It's one of those conditional probability questions. So it's the probability of picking a zero given that um, it's not a five. That, that, so the number selected is a zero. Given that it's not a five, so you, you look at the total probability of not five and take that as your denominator and find the probability of zero divided by that. And that gives you your answer. Then it says, show that E X squared equals 75. The expected value of X squared equals 75. So what we got to do here for this, this part of the question is we got to find what um, X squared is first. So we got to take those X values and square them. That's going to be 0, 25, and 100. And then we multiply those by the probabilities of each of those. Um, you know, And you can then multiply those together and get your value. So EX squared is going to be 0 times 0 0.1 plus 25 times 0 0.2 plus 100 times 0 0.7. So that's going to be 0 plus, that's going to be 1 fifth times 5, which is 5 plus... Uh, 7, 7, 0 0.7 times 170 so that gives you as we can see 75 which is exactly what we had to show so when you have a question like where it says show you have to be very careful to you know have the steps shown very carefully so I've shown I've got x squared I've shown the working and I've got my answer so you've got to put as many steps as possible when it says show that and they really give you the answer now for part C it says find the variance of x now we know that the variance is basically the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. So the variance is going to be the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. So it's going to be basically EX squared, which we just found, minus the square of the mean, which is EX, all squared. So that's going to be what we just found now, which is 75 minus, and we've got to square what we'd get when we multiply X by the probability of x. So 0 times 0 0.1, which is going to be 0, of course, um, plus, and you're going to have 5 times 0 0.2, plus, and you're going to have 7 times 0. Point, um, not 7, it's, it's 10 times 0 0.7, sorry, what am I talking about? 10 times 0 0.7. And that has to be squared. That part has to be squared. So that's going to give you 75 minus, that's going to be 0, plus 1, plus 7, that's um, 8, 8 squared, which is 75 minus 64, which is 11. So therefore, we can say the variance of x is equal to 11. So there's the answer for part C. Now for part D, it says find the variance of 4 minus 3x. Now what we should know is for the variance of a transformation of x, we know what the variance of x is. We know the variance of x is equal to 11. So this is like when you've taken the values of x and you've coded them with this code. 
and you want to find the variance of the coded data. Okay. Now, what we should understand is when we um, take, when we're thinking about the variance, the variance is um, a measure of how spread out the data is from the mean. So, if you were to add or subtract values, uh, numbers to each of the values in a set of data, you don't affect the spread of that data. It doesn't change. The spread of the data is unchanged when you add or subtract. For example, if I have the numbers one, two, three, and four, and I add one to each of those, I get two, three, four, and five. The spread of the data is still the same. But multiplying and dividing um, each data uh, set of the each number of the in the data will change the spread of the data. If I was to multiply, for example, each of these data sets by two, I would get you know two, four, six, and eight. So you can see the spread of the data is now doubled. Okay, so the variance is affected by the um, multiplication parts, but not the division parts. Right. So it's this, the standard deviation would be doubled if we were multiplying by 2, but the variance would be multiplied by a factor of 4 because the variance is the square of the standard deviation. So over here, what we do is we ignore the things which are added or subtracted, which is this 4. But we take the things that are multiplied by x and we square that. So minus 3 squared times the variance of x is going to give you um, the new or the variance of this coded data. So you take the, the number that's multiplying the x and you square it and you multiply that by the, the variance of x and you end up with your answer. So it's 9 times 11, which is 99. So we can say the variance of 4 minus 3x is equal to 99. Okay, so there's the answer for part D of this question. Right, now for part E, it says Bruno and Charlie each independently select one number at random from the distribution of x. So their selections are independent of each other. One doesn't affect the other. Find the probability that the number Bruno selects is greater than the number Charlie selects. So let's say Bruno selects first and Charlie selects second. So, of course, if Bruno selects a number greater than Charlie, that means he can't select a zero because, you know, you know if he selects a zero, then Charlie's going to either select the same or more. So he has to start with a five. And he can if he, if he picks a five, then Bru Charlie has to pick a zero. Okay, so five zero is one possibility um now if he that's the only the only possibility if bruno picks a five is that charlie picks a zero it can't be five and five because it says bruno's selection must be greater than charlie's selection okay now we can also consider if bruno picks a 10 then charlie could pick a zero 10 and zero that's one combination bruno's is bigger than charlie's selection or if bruno picks a 10 charlie picks a five that would also fit this description now, if Bruno picks a 10, Charlie picks a 10, no, it won't work. So these are the three outcomes which satisfy this condition. So the probability of picking a 5 and then a 0 is 0 0.2 times 0 0.1. And the probability of picking a 10 and then a 0 is 0 0.7 times um, 0 0.1. And the probability of picking a 10 and then a 5 is 0 0.7 times 0 0.2. Okay, so that's, um, those are the outcomes there. So now if we add these outcomes together, we'll get the answer. You get 0 0.02, and that's 0 0.07, and that's 0 0.14. So we add them together, you get that's 21 plus, well, 21 plus 2, that's 23, 0 0.23. Okay, so the probability that the number that Bruno picks is greater than the number that Charlie picks is equal to 0 0.23 and there's the answer to question part e now for part f it says devika multiplies bruno's number by charlie's number to obtain a product d determine the probability distribution of d okay so now um basically whatever bruno picks then charlie's number is multiplied by that so for example if Bruno picks a 0 and Charlie picks a 0 then you're going to get 0 times 0 which is 0 right um so let, let's yeah so we can let's let's first work out the the, the possible distribution that we can have I'll, I'll put the table here this is going to be um let's call this d and the probability that d equals d right 
So what's all the possible outcomes we can have for the, for D, the possible values of the discrete random variable D? The possible values of the discrete va uh, random variable D are going to be 0 times 0, which is 0. Um, and of course, 0 times 5 and 0 times 10, that's also going to be possibilities. Then you're going to have uh, 5 times 5, which is 25. That's another possibility if they both pick a 5. All right. Um, and if uh, one of them picks a 5, the other one picks a 10, that's going to give you 50, whichever way that happens. And then the other one is they both pick 10, that's going to be 100. So those are all the possible values that D can have. Those are all the possible ways of getting D. All right. All the possible, sorry, uh, values for the product of a number from 0 times 5 or 0 times 10 or 5 times 0, or 5 times 5, 10, 10 times 10, whatever. Those are all the possible values that D can be. So we've got to find the probability of um, each of these outcomes. So I think the most long-winded one will be 0 because you can have 0 times 5 or 0 times 0 or 0 times 10 or 5 times. There's lots of different ways of getting 0. But if we go by, for example, let's start with 5 times 5. The only way of getting 25 is 5 times 5. So, you know, one of them is 5 and 5. They, they both pick 5. So that's going to be 0 0.2 times 0 0.2, which is 0 0.04. So that's the only way of getting 25. If they both pick a 5. Now, if you're going to get uh, um, 50, you can get that by doing... Well, the other one is easy, actually, is, is, is um, 100. 100, the only way of getting 100 is 10 by 10. So that's going to give you 0 0.7 times 0 0.7, which is 0 0.49. Okay, 0 0.49. So that, that fills that one straight away. Now we've got these two. I think 50 is easier than 100. The only ways of getting 50 is if you have 5 times 10 or if you have 10 times 5. One picks a 5, the other one picks a 10, or the other way around. So that's going to give us uh, basically um, 0 0.2 times 0 0.7. And then there are going to be two of them the other way around. So you're going to add two of them together. It'll be like this. This will give you an answer. That's going to be 0 0.14 times 2, 0 0.28. So that's going to be 0 0.28. And then what we can do is we can just find the answer by subtracting all of this from 1. So you have 0 0.04 plus 0 0.28 plus 0 0.49. And we do 1 minus, um, sorry. You do 1 minus the answer. Whoops. What did we get there? So you do 1 minus the answer, which gives us 19 over 100, 0 0.19. So that gives you 0 0.1. So you can say the probability of 0, um, you know, which will be a 0 and a 0, but it's been 0 0.19. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I get 0 0.19 because it might be we've done something wrong. Now, if I look at all the ways of getting zeros and I get 0 0.19, I know that I've done everything else right. Okay, And I'm thinking of the right way. So you can have 0 and 0. Or you can have 0 and 5. Or you can have 5 and 0. Or you can have um, 0 and 10 and 10 and 0. These are all the ways. 0 and 10 or 10 and 0. Those are all the ways of getting 0. So for 0 and 0, it's just basically a 0 0.1 squared. So this is going to be 0 0.1 squared, which is 0 0.01. And for 0, 5 and 5, 0, you're going to have 0 0.1 times 0 0.2 times 2. So 0 0.1 times 0.2. 2 times 2. Okay, 0 0.1 times 0 0.2 times 2. That's going to give you 0 0.04. That will be 0 0.08. 0 0.08. Okay. And then you're going to have um, 0, 10, and 10, 0. Well, that's 0 0.7 times... Um, that's going to be 0 0.1 times 0 0.7. Again, times 2. Both ways. That's going to be 0 0.07, 0 0.14. So you're going to have 0 0.01 plus 0 0.08 plus 0 0.14. That's going to give you um, 14 plus um, 0.04. Actually, this is 0 0.04. That's my bad. That's supposed to be 0 0.04. That's my mistake there. Because you're going to have 0 0.1 times 0 0.2, which is 0 0.02 times 2, which is 0 0.04. So just making sure there, that, yeah, that works out now, 0 0.19. So that was a little check here. I made a little mistake there, but we, we, we figured that out. That's, 
good. So 0 0.19 is exactly what we get. So we can see from from subtracting all of the answers, these these added together from one, you get 0 0.19. And just to make sure that we're thinking in the right way, we you know did exactly the same methodology to find the probability of um, the total being a zero. And that came out to 0 0.19 as well. So we know that we're correct. And that concludes this, this question. So basically, here we got to find, you know, Bruno's number times Charlie's number and find the probability of, you know, how many, what, what are the different outcomes and what are the probabilities of the outcomes. That's what we did. So they're both picking a number either 0, 5 and 10. So if you look at all the combinations of the products of their numbers, it's either going to be 0 or 25 or 50 or 100. And we found the probability of each of those, thinking about all the combinations we can possibly get. And that concludes this question, part F. So there's the answer. There's the probability distribution here. Okay, and there's all the steps for it. So that uh, that concludes our, our, our question, question number seven. And that concludes this whole paper from October 2022, the International A-Level at Excel, S1 paper. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region at the top of the page. Other questions from um, discrete random variables on S1 can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link in the middle. Thank you for watching and see you soon.